I won't really describe myself as a DIY type of person, but I like to make all sorts of things at least once, just to confirm that I can. Besides, creating products yourself gives you more control to customize it to exactly how you want it. So if you're a DIY type of person, I hope you find this video helpful because I'm about to show you how to make your own apple cider vinegar from scratch. But first, a brief history lesson from our sponsor, Green Beauty. Action. Six and a half hours later. Hey guys, vinegar has been used for centuries all over Asia, the Middle East, and in Africa, mainly to preserve food. But did you know in Europe it was discovered by accident? Wine was stored in kegs like these. Supposedly, someone stored a keg of wine too long and didn't seal it properly, which allowed oxygen to enter. So when they went to drink it, they discovered that it had a sour taste. So the word vinegar comes from the French phrase sour wine. Now back to the video. If you plan on just using apple cider vinegar on your hair, then it's a lot easier to just buy an organic apple cider vinegar from the store. But if you plan on drinking it, making it yourself has added benefits. First, while apple cider vinegar itself doesn't have any measurable vitamins, minerals, or nutritional elements, the mother does. So you can make a stronger and more mature mother that you can use over and over again for multiple batches. I'll show you what I mean by that later on in the video. You also have more control over the taste because different apples produce different tastes. Apple cider vinegar is really easy to make. For your first batch, all you'll need is a glass jar, some organic apples, some cheesecloth, and depending on what type of jar you're using, a hair tie, raw organic cane sugar, distilled water, a clean wooden spoon, and a strainer. That's it. Before we start, here's how to prep each item. Let's start with a jar. No need to go out of your way to use the same exact jar I'm using. Any size or height will do. Just make sure it has a wide opening and that it's a glass or ceramic jar because the acidic pH of our future vinegar will eat away at a plastic jar. I personally prefer to use a glass jar with a faucet because the faucet makes it easier to pour out what I need when I'm ready to use it. But for demonstrational purposes, I'll use this small jar to show you how to make apple cider vinegar. It has to be cleaned and sterilized because we want to make sure there's no invisible bacteria in here that's going to mess up our vinegar. To sterilize, thoroughly wash out the jar with hot water and soap or put it in a dishwasher to make sure there's no stuck on debris. Then put the jar in a hot oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. The heat from that is enough to kill any bacteria that may be in there. Use a clean oven mitt to remove the jar from the oven. Be careful, this glass is hot as hell. Place it on a clean paper towel and not a kitchen rag because you don't want to reintroduce the now sterilized jar to bacteria again. But don't drive yourself too crazy with this. While the glass cools off, let's prep our apples. It's best to use organic apples because non-organic apples are sprayed with a lot of pesticides, which can mess up our batch. As I mentioned earlier, different apples produce different tastes. I'm currently experimenting with three different types, but for this video, I wanna try mixing them. Wash them thoroughly with just warm water, then chop them into small pieces. Make sure to cut out any rotten parts and the stem because they may cause problems later on in the process. But don't drive yourself too crazy with this part either. Fun fact! After cutting the apples, 
Let them sit for a few minutes so some of the sugar can rise to the surface. You can tell by how brown it gets. It's a great way to kickstart your fermenting process. Now that your main players are prepped, add your clean chopped apple pieces into the sterilized glass jar. Then add the distilled water. No strict measurements, just make sure the water is enough to submerge all the apples. Then there's the sugar. The good bacteria and yeast that will eventually form in here feed on sugar to grow. They get most of the sugar from the apples, but adding just a little bit more makes them happy. You don't want to add too much though, so stick with one tablespoon per liter. This glass jar is about two liters, so I'm adding two tablespoons. Use a wooden spoon to stir it around. Oh, just so you know, it's best to use distilled water and organic raw sugar because they both contain the least amount of impurities. We're trying to create life here, so it needs oxygen. But it's really important that the apples stay submerged in the water. As you can see from this failed batch, if the apples aren't fully submerged, it'll start to mold and you have to start all over again. If you have some apples sitting above the water, use something to weigh it down like a sterilized glass cup or jar. The tricky part is finding a perfect fit that can keep the apples fully submerged in the water without completely blocking out oxygen flow. Cover everything with a cheesecloth so fruit flies can't lay their eggs in our mixture. All my apples are safely submerged, so I don't need a weight. I'm just gonna secure my cheesecloth with this handy rim. This is one of the benefits of using these two liter jars. They come with these detachable rims that do a really good job at securing the cheesecloth. But it's not a biggie. If you don't have one, use a hair tie or a rubber band. This mixture is sensitive to light. It also ferments faster in warmer temperatures. So keep that in mind when looking for a spot. It's gonna take about a month for the mother to start forming. But the next two to three weeks is a fragile stage. So check on it every day to make sure mold is informing. After a few days or so, you'll start to notice little bubbles appear and collect on the surface. This is a good thing. It's a great sign that your mixture is active and fermenting correctly. If this foam is any other color than white, your batch has gone bad. Some of the water will evaporate out, so you'll have to check on it from time to time and push down some of the apples. After a month, it should look something like this. You can tell the apples are infusing well with the water because the bubbles have disappeared and the apples stopped floating and have sunk to the bottom. By now, a young mother has started to form. You can kind of see it at the corners. I have found that using more apples helps the mother form way faster. So you can notice the mother way more in this batch where I use more apples. See the difference? I'll use this batch as an example going forward. One, because it's doing a way better job, and two, because it's in a jar with a faucet. Strain out the apples to prep this for the next stage. Next time, I'll remember to start the process in a different jar and transfer it into this glass jar with a faucet to make my life a lot easier. If this is your first batch of apple cider vinegar, do yourself a favor and just add some store-bought apple cider vinegar with a mother during the second stage just to make sure your mother grows faster or you'll be waiting forever. Now all you have to do is let it sit in a warm dark area of your house for another four weeks or so. You don't even have to check on it much because it doesn't like to be disturbed or moved around during the stage. In the next video, I'll show you detailed steps on how to keep the mother healthy and growing by reusing it to make better and better batches. I'll also show you how I use it on my hair. So please stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.